Okay, so welcome everyone. Thank you for coming and joining us this afternoon. And um, we're here to learn about uh, math problems in different languages with Daniel Waters Water from OISE. And um, thank you, Daniel, for joining us and sharing your expertise. Thank you, uh, Christine, and I'm very delighted to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so today we're going to continue our journey with math and uh, solve some uh, we'll do some fun brain teasers and do math problems in different languages. Um, I will be, as we talk about different problems, uh, you know, acknowledging different uh, people who really helped me on my journey and parts of the things I'll be sharing to do uh, today are supported by, you know, an earlier uh, small research that I've done with uh, Professor Emmanuel Lopichon, as well as uh, work that we're currently doing supported by uh, my tax and Inogi. So we're going to do uh, this a little uh, differently today. So we're going to, I'm going to invite everybody to try some math problems. I'm going to share a link to a document in the chat that people, um, you know, can look at, uh, approach some questions. I'll also have them on the screen. And then together we can discuss the process of solving these math problems. We'll share them some tips and tricks, and then we're gonna talk about, okay, where do we go from here? What do we learn from here? And how does this experience inform how we support multilingual learners in learning mathematics? So I'm going to place a link in the chat. It, you will be prompted to copy a document just because we can't all write on the same document. Um, if you have problem with that, let me know. I'll just share with you a link where you can view it. Uh, feel free to grab a pencil and paper, or if you want to make a copy and write directly on the document. Um, I'm just going to show you how the document looks like. There are about five problems of math in this document, and I invite you to take maybe uh, five to ten minutes to look at these problems. So I've kind of scaffolded the process for you. They go from easy and then they increase in difficulties. I'm going to say, please answer the following questions, then take a few minutes to reflect on the process of solving these questions. What step did you have to do? And how are these different from previous math questions that you have solved either as a student or as a teacher? So question one would be, please solve the following problems. Please note in order to solve each problem, you need to read it from right to left. Those of you who were in our previous session, you may have tried this a bit. So uh, you can skip if you want to, or you can try it again, see if you're getting better at practicing this. Question two is kind of similar, but with a twist. This time, uh, the numerals are different. So you're going to have to do some additional work as you try to figure out these numerals, if these are numerals that are new to, to, to you. Uh, question three will involve solving an equation, but remember the arrow um, always indicates that you need to go from right to left when solving an equation, and it's telling you scene is a variable. Uh, question four is a word problem, and question five is a word problem. It's all in English. And then if you finish early, I invite you to actually click on the link in Padlet. And maybe if you wanna add a post on Padlet, uh, you know, so we can actually all learn from each, each other, either commenting on the process, some tips and tricks that help you solve these problems, any reflections, any difficulties, any ideas that you wanna do. So I don't know if anybody would like to actually, I'm not sure if Christine, we have the ability to create breakout rooms so people can actually talk about the math. as yes. they're Thank you. Um, and I usually encourage, uh, you know, teachers, colleagues over here um, to either if they want to work on the problems independently, they are working to, uh, they are welcome to work on them independently. But I think it's also nice to have a colleague, maybe, maybe we can have rooms of three people just uh, randomly, and then uh, people can chat about it, support each other, think aloud about how they would approach these problems. I would say we will probably need 10 minutes. Let me place the link, please, uh, to this document in the chat one more time for those who uh, just joined us so they have access to the document. Again, this is a document where there are a list of math problems and I invite you to take the time to either think about them independently if you want to, with your camera off and your mic off, or actually kind of unmute yourself in a breakout room and talk about the process, discuss with colleagues and think about them. Maybe I can stay, um, I don't know if I have the ability as a co-host, yeah, I'll be joining rooms and moving around from yeah. one to 
to another uh, if anybody needs help. But maybe if you can please and thank you uh, time for, let's try for eight minutes in breakout rooms. And then okay. we can have uh, three people that would be greatly appreci appreciated. So we'll spend some time mm -hmm. um, on solving these math problems and talking about the process of uh, solving them. And I'll put the link in the chat one more time, just for those who just joined us. Um, we are taking a look at uh, these math problems and uh, we're gonna try to solve them and think about the process of solving them in the next eight minutes. Then we'll come back and we'll discuss them. Okay, so I'll open the breakout room. So actually, sorry, one minute. I'm going to change that. Um, okay, so we'll try. Three to four is fine if you want to. Three. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, I'm going to open the breakout rooms and invite you to join one. Thank you so much. And if anyone can't join, actually see it or can't join it, just let me know and I can move you into a breakout room. I'll stay a second just to make sure everybody's good. And then if okay. anybody has questions, I'll post the link yet one more time in the chat for those who just joined us. Uh, we are solving these math problems. Um, let me just see if this is it. Yeah. And uh, we'll be back in eight minutes. Not sure if you would like to pause the recording and then come back or keep it open, whatever. I'm going to pause it. Yeah. And I'm going to move Sonia to room seven, if that's okay with Sonia. Wonderful. So this meeting is being recorded. Okay, welcome back, everyone. Um, it was really fun listening to different conversations happening in rooms, uh, teachers commenting on how this is making them think now about their multilingual learners in their classrooms and the processes they have to do. Because we have limited time and we may not be able all to share uh, all our, our insights, I really invite you, please, and thank you if you can take a moment and add maybe some of your reflections or comments or questions on Padlet. Uh, this way, at least if we don't get an opportunity to share, uh, we can look at it. Or if you, if it's easier for you to share on uh, uh, in the chat, you are welcome. Rose is saying that was fun. Thank you so much. Uh, anybody else? Maybe we'll take a minute or two just to hear your insights. But to make sure everybody gets an opportunity to share, please feel free to go to this uh, Padlet link and then you can just press a, uh, on the plus button that's at the bottom right corner and then you can just you know, write a comment that was fun or challenging or interesting, or, you know, uh, this made me think about blah, blah, blah. Direction of text trains my eyes to read in different direction that I'm used to, great challenge. Okay, great. Thank you. So good to hear about even the direction. Little change uh, makes a big difference. Thank you so much. Anybody would like to either type in the chat, share your insights or just write on Padlet. And I know, you know, as as uh, teachers, we're always reminded to give some waiting time so people actually have the opportunity to take. So maybe I'll wait a few seconds. Okay, really good point that this was fun, but it was an, in an unthreatening environment. So, you know, you felt that this is more, more like, you know, a brain teaser or you're doing this for fun. There was no pressure. You're not being graded. Uh, nobody, you know, was going to say, no, you got that wrong. So that was really interesting insights. So in addition to that, let's look at some of the issues that we faced or maybe some of the um, strategies that helped us cope or figure out how to answer the questions. Remembering cognitive loads happen even before doing the math. That's really good, interesting question. So you had some questions right to left, some English and Arabic. Some of you recognize the language. Some of you were like, uh, are these just numbers? Are these... Um, actually sentences, what do I do? Um, so it was really interesting to hear the discussion. Well, I found it difficult to differentiate the symbols quickly, but given more time, I feel like I could have solved more problems. So the idea of time, and I know a lot of us uh, as you know, ELL teachers or consultants, we often think of you know, adding extra time. So this is at least a reminder of why, what are some of the reasons why we may actually require extra time rather than just like, you know, 
uh, automatically doing it. Oh, it's a language learner. Let's give them extra time. You actually appreciate now why they may require that additional time. Uh, really powerful to do with teachers. Oh, oops. Uh, in a workshop to experience it firsthand. Glad to work with a team in an unfamiliar territory. Okay, great. So I will uh, keep this open only because we have limited time. I will go back and visit this. Please continue to add your um, valuable contributions or discussion points. But I know because of time limits, I'm just going to go and take the questions up. So uh, you're welcome to answer the write the type the answers if you like to in the chat. Uh, so what would you answer? You can just write A, B, C with the answers, or you can just write three answers with the column. We'll know the first one is for A, second one is for C, and the third one is for D. Um, maybe this one, um, I'll go quickly and then I'll try to slow down for the following one. I think most people didn't have difficulty with the first question because we know addition and addition properties. So whether we did it right to left or left, left to right wasn't problematic. So in some of the rooms I was in, people right away got the answer. Um, however, when you get to question B, you really need to be mindful that you're going from right to left. So the negative sign will belong to the number after. And because we're going from right to left, that would be the one on the left. So, you know, you would have had to remember that it's 12 plus 20, 32, and then minus 13, you would do that. Um, same here, you know, one strategy could be to actually put, you know, add negative numbers together and then, you know, do the problems. Um, Dr. Emanuela Pichon, uh, I've worked with her with different projects. Uh, her picture is right here um, at the corner. She is here with us. So thank you so much. She is a great mentor that I really value and appreciate. And one time we were doing similar exercises um, at a workshop and she's like, why don't we actually have some tips and tricks together? And we developed these tips and tricks. So I want to really uh, thank her. Thank you. And I don't know if you would like to make any comments, uh, Dr. Lofishon, or if you want to just, uh, we're really thankful to be here and we really acknowledge um, your support in this. So we felt that as teachers, as many of you knew, like the purpose of today's sessions is actually build on, build on our experience and think about scaffolding the process, supporting multilingual learners. So making expectations explicit, giving examples, modeling. I know some of you were saying having visuals absolutely will help uh, students. So these are all uh, really good strategies to help language learners. Um, question two. Oops, I still have the annotate feature. There we go. Oops, uh, select. Okay, there we go. Yeah, in addition to having to remember where the negative sign belongs, students will need to work on some decoding before finding the answer for this question, right? So some of you said, well, I needed some time to go back to the table and look at the answers, but if I had more time, I may be able to do it. So, and as you notice in this, actually, I've already scaffolded the questions. So you start with when change, which is only the direction, and then the change in the numerals, and I added more language, and then I kind of, they became complex. Sometimes we forget to do that, especially if students join us later in the year, and we forget, like, you know, they have to solve this uh, word problem, and we forget that actually there's so much decoding happening, and some of you mentioned how, like, the cognitive overlook. So this is, again, a reminder to think about the different processes and steps involved. Um, so again, these are the answers. So with the decoding, this is five, four, seven, 16. These numerals are used in different countries around the world. Uh, so people refer to these kinds of numerals as the Indo-Arabic system. So in countries like Syria, for example, they use these um, in uh, grades up to grade four, and then these numerals are introduced to students. Um, when I grew up as a student, I had to learn how to use these numerals. So um, I was familiar with the numerals because, you know, we took English as a second language, but um, the negative sign and the direction between right to left really took some time to adjust as I kind of moved from learning to write or solve right to left or left to right. So, uh, you know, remember to maybe use some visuals to support your students. Um, as you've noticed, I don't have it on the slides, but on uh, in here, I did have a table to help you. These are the numerals. These are the ones that you may be familiar with. And then these are some 
uh, words that can help you. So this is the one, this is how it's written in Arabic, and this is Wahid. So a lot of times helping, having those tables for students uh, really help and appreciating the time it takes to do the decoding. So as some of you mentioned, sometimes, you know, we're overwhelmed before even doing the math. So really having that sensitivity and appreciation is great. But also do note that um, different countries, so just because a student comes from, say, a country like Syria or Saudi Arabia or UAE, they may have gone to different educational system. So do take the time to get to know your students. And if you notice they're actually serving different language, appreciate that, but don't make assumptions that all students coming from a certain country may be learning a different way or everybody who speaks Arabic, you know, solves it from right to left. I know I had colleagues and students who, um, were from Iran and they speak Persian and like the numbers are really familiar with us, this is easy, but they were also used of so, um, to solving problems from left to right. So this there for them, I'm like, okay, the right to left is a trick, the symbols are not a problem. Again, the bottom line is think about your students, try to get to understand them and hopefully through these problems, you are understanding how to support them better. And, uh, you know, I've referred to this last time. I always like to refer to curriculum documents. We're supposed to understand our students' backgrounds, build on their knowledge. So it's just like you built today on your knowledge in math and some of you translated the language. We appreciate that. And let's think about how we can support students. Um, that's from the curriculum documents. Um, this was a fun one. And again, if we had more time, I would be... Uh, actually taking, maybe we should have taken more time to invite you actually to do this in a more interactive way and write on the screen, et cetera. But because we only have four minutes left, I'm just gonna kind of uh, show you the answers quickly. And then maybe I'll go back to Badlet, Badlet and see. Um, in some curricula, like the language is, you know, students read instruction in one language and then they have to solve problems in a different direction. For example, I wrote to you solve the following equation from left to right in English, but then you have to switch and solve the equation from right to left. It was seen not as khamsa yusawi ashra, which if we were to translate it, this is similar to x minus five equals 10. And you know, one strategy would be, you know, um, adding plus five to both sides uh, or moving the negative five, depending on the strategy you're teaching and then x equals 15. And uh, again, there are, these are some tips and tricks that you can take a look at. I'm gonna check the chat and then I'll move on. And please feel free to ask any question if you want. Okay, Padlet, I wanted to have this just to make sure I remember. So please feel free to add your ideas. I uh, really appreciate your insights. I'm gonna go back. Um, this is a really interesting one. And what really uh, resonates with me in this question is that uh, it always happens when I'm in a room. A, some people didn't know what this, are these just numbers and we have to go back to the table? And then is this a sentence? What strategies can I do? And sometimes people will actually tell me, is it okay if I use Google Translate? So we really need to provide that environment that's supportive to our students, but to help them provide them with the tools. Sometimes students are hesitant. Sometimes they may feel that, oh, I don't know what this is. So don't assume that, oh, it's obvious. You can just use a translator and use it. It's obvious because you have done it so many times or taught it, but it might not be obvious for students. So provide that scaffolding, offer support, offer suggestions to support your students. Over here, I have each of the words written, but also, over here, I have an example of how you can use this. Um, so the length is 15, though it's, it's 10 centimeters. Um, even better if you wanted to, for example, have this visual with the question, at least the students then, if they're good with math, they may be getting a sense of, okay, what is this? They will still have to figure out, you know, what is required, what is given, et cetera. So uh, it's six styles because the width is 10, the length is 15, and I have here a visual of five and five. Uh, one tool, because I'm like, yes, this is great, but how do we go from there? One tool that's really interesting, I referred to this last time, but I invite you all to explore it, is called binogi.ca. Uh, this is a multilingual uh, tool that's available online. I'll put the link in the chat where students can watch videos related to math and science in different languages, uh, but also 
they can actually solve quizzes in different languages. So rather than having to spend time on translation, it's taking time to load my screen. I'm just gonna try save, sharing uh, one more time to see if it's faster this time. And I'll wrap up in a minute, I promise. I'll... Okay. Oops, okay. So binogi.ca again, I invite you to visit that tool. Okay, good. Uh, because what's really nice about it is even actually students can solve quizzes in two languages okay, every time I try to. Um, so for example, here students can actually, you see over here, quiz one, quiz two, quiz three. They may have it in English, but if they want to, they can change the language and then they can solve the problems in say Arabic or other languages that are available. And this way, you know, I don't need to explain to you why this may be helpful. You've already experienced that and, you know, realized how much work is involved in um, reading a language. We don't have a lot of time doing uh, this, but I wanted to just comment on sometimes even the language in the problem all written in English. And even if the students, you know, put it in Google Translate or understood the language, there may be a lot of decoding, a lot of thinking happening. Uh, in this question, it's about the gas cylinder. Do they actually know what's a gas cylinder? If I give a student, you know, students who grew up in Canada this problem, will they understand? The same thing for other students, like I learned and myself when I came, say, to Canada, I was doing uh, math problems and there was like a hockey arena. I'm like, yeah, this is cool, but what are the dimensions? What are the rules? What shape is it? I don't know what that is. So sometimes, even if the language is good, even if I understand every single word uh, in this or I use Google Translate, there might be some cultural understanding that needs scaffolding. They might not be familiar with the situation you're saying. Even so, you might say, oh, kids love hockey. I'm really, you know, you know, my pedagogy is student centered because they love hockey and I have a problem about hockey. But what if I've never played hockey or I don't even know how a hockey arena is looked like? So here's the answers. We don't have time to go into details. I'm sorry, but I wish uh, maybe another time. Um, I will, finally wanted to conclude with also if you are looking now that you have seen um, how, uh, you know, it can be, you know, takes time and steps to solve problems in different languages. I would invite you to visit. Uh, this is part of the research project that I told you about uh, later. Uh, Dr. Emmanuel Pichon is a principal investigator along with uh, others. You can find out more about the project there. But what's really interesting is that we are continuing to add. If you sign up, it's a free account. It's, uh, you know, just for research purposes. You can sign up for teaching resources and you can actually access lots of uh, activities and resources in there. Uh, you may even watch previous or uh, future videos by Ergo where we sometimes go into details and show you the resources. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have time to talk about this. We have a publication coming up soon. So if you're interested in the topic and we want to learn more about you know, something related to learning math in different languages, we have this coming up. Thank you so much. I'm really sorry that I rushed through this. I know. I've went really fast, but I know it's recorded. So maybe you can, if you wanted to, you can uh, put it on slow and solve it, but, and, uh, and watch it again. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, thank you for everyone to attending. Again, uh, I appreciate all your insights and suggestions and uh, maybe we'll uh, see you in uh, future sessions or uh, please feel free to email me, reach out to me. I'll place my email in the chat actually to make it easier um, or go to the escape projects. I'll put the link to the escape projects in the chat where you can connect uh, with myself or with Dr. Emmanuel Lopchon or the team and find out more about the resources that we can share with you. So um, thanks everyone so much for your participation and that's it. I don't know if anybody has a question or I'll be happy to stay in a little uh, longer if anybody would like to stay, but please feel free to reach out. Thank you, Daniel, for sharing all of that. I know it's very quick, but I know that there's lots of learning of the examples and, and um, having that time to even think about it, just even the short time is valuable for everyone.